On the other hand, going back to the acetic acid, here's the reaction for acetic acid with water. Here's the reaction for acetic acid with water. This is an acid, so the acetic acid protonates the water. Now, when you're ready. Now, is this reaction going to go to completion or to equilibrium? Equilibrium. Because we know this is just a weak acid. This is called a weak acid. And the technical meaning of weak acid is a weak acid is somebody who, when it reacts with water, it deprotonates partially, but not totally. Right. A weak acid is someone who uh, de uh, deprotonates partially, but not totally. Um, therefore, um, we're not going to get rid of all of the original acetic acid. If we were using up all the acetic acid, it would be deprotonating completely. But since it's weak, it's only going to deprotonate partially. And that means that this is an equilibrium. Here we should really use an equilibrium error. For this reaction, I used a one-way error that shows the reaction going to completion because this was with a strong acid. But for this reaction, I should use an equilibrium arrow. Uh, and now, if I was going to be really precise, I would want to show which side the equilibrium lies on. But we don't care about that now. It doesn't matter so much which side the equilibrium lies on. The key thing is that there's an equilibrium. The point is that when the reaction finishes, it's not going to be all acetic acid or all acetate. There'll be a mixture of both, because this is going to completion. When this reaction finishes, all we're going to have in solution is the chloride. And there won't be any hydrochloric acid left, because hydrochloric acid is a strong acid that completely deprotonates. But when this reaction finishes, so to speak, it will be an equilibrium, and there will be both the acetic acid and the acetate uh, in the equilibrium, because this is a weak acid that does not completely deprotonate. Okay. All right, and this proves that the point I was trying to make earlier, that the conjugate of a weak acid is a weak base. Yeah. So this is the, this is the conjugate base. This is the conjugate base of the acetic acid, and we can see it's a weak base. What do we mean when we say it's a weak base? We just mean that uh, its reaction with water goes to equilibrium. Its reaction with water just goes to equilibrium, not to completion. Uh, acetate likes to pick up protons, mm -hmm. but are all the acetates going to pick up protons? No. If all the acetates were picking up protons, then this reaction would be going all the way to the left. Well, we know it's not supposed to go all the way to the left or all the way to the right. It's supposed to be an equilibrium between these two things. Right. So anytime you have a weak acid, its conjugate base must also be uh, a weak base, because a weak acid is somebody whose reaction with water goes to equilibrium. Well, on the other side of that reaction is the conjugate base, and that means the conjugate base is also part of that equilibrium. But if you have a strong acid, that means um, that its reaction goes to completion. And that means its conjugate must be really hardly basic at all, because uh, in, in this reaction, this is going to completion. Uh, we're going to go all, pretty much all the way to the right-hand side. The chloride is not going to um, move to the left at all and protonate. All right, so those are uh, some important uh, ideas. So we want to use a weak acid, because then we know its conjugate base would also be weak. Uh, so it turns out that to make a buffer, you need both a weak acid and uh, its conjugate weak base. That's the basic idea, and we'll see why in a second. Um, now, one reason this is confusing is it is true that the weaker this acid is, the stronger its conjugate will be. We know that when you weaken an acid, its conjugate becomes stronger. When you weaken an acid, its conjugate becomes stronger. Um, but as long as the acid um, uh, is still somewhat, uh, or maybe another way of putting it, maybe it would be clear to say, the stronger this acid is, the weaker its conjugate will be. The stronger this acid is, the weaker its conjugate will be. But as long as, um, as long as it's still not strong enough to be a completely strong acid, as long as it's not an acid that's completely deprotonating, even as we strengthen this and this becomes weaker, we're still going to have that this, uh, it, it, we, as, as long as this is a weak acid, its conjugate base will be weak as well. And if you have a, uh, a weak base, its conjugate acid is weak. That just means that their reactions go to equilibrium. Okay, so uh, those are some uh, important ideas. Uh, so the basic idea here is that weak acids and weak bases have reactions that go to, com uh, that go to equilibrium and, uh, with water. And strong acids and strong bases have reactions that go to completion. And that means that their conjugates, the conjugate of a strong acid really isn't basic at all. 
because um, this reaction is going to completion, there's almost none of the reverse reaction happening. And the conjugate of a strong base is really hardly acidic at all for a similar reason. All right, as we go along, hopefully it'll be clear why uh, these ideas are useful for understanding uh, buffers, but we should proceed and then see uh, how this applies. Okay, so the points we wanted to make is, can we make a buffer out of this? No. No, because we got a strong acid yeah. here. Can we make a buffer out of this? Because yeah. they're both weak. We need both a weak acid and its conjugate. Mm -hmm. Now, another point to make here is, um, normally, you don't normally just, uh, notice that this has a charge. Well, there must be some counter ion to balance that charge. Mm -hmm. There must be some counter ion to balance that charge. Now, uh, the counter ion is just going to be a spectator ion. It's not going to participate in the reaction. So sometimes people draw the counter ion and sometimes they don't. But if we drew the counter ion, it would be something like, say, sodium. If we drew the counter ion here, then we'd have sodium acetate. Mm -hmm. Now we have sodium acetate. And now the convention is we don't call this the conjugate base anymore. Instead, we call it the conjugate salt because a salt is just an ionic compound. Uh, a salt is basically just an ionic compound. So instead of saying that the buffer here now is made out of a weak acid and its conjugate base, a lot of people would say, if they're including the sodium, a lot of people would say it's made out of a weak acid and its conjugate salt. But that, that's just a change in terminology. It's just a change in terminology. It doesn't change act actually who's actually in, the, in there at all. So I just wanted to, to point out, sometimes when you see buffers described, you see them described as a weak acid and its conjugate base. But sometimes you see it described as a weak acid and its conjugate salt. And I just want to point out those are the same exact thing. It's just that when we're mentioning the spectator ion, we call it a conjugate salt. And if we leave the spectator ion out, we tend to call it the conjugate base. But either way, it's the conjugate. Either way, it's the same exact thing. So it doesn't matter whether you call this the conjugate base or the conjugate salt. Um, the important thing is that it's the conjugate of this weak acid. OK. Okay, so um, that gives us our basic ideas. All right, and now we need to review why it is that this will give us a buffer and this won't give us a buffer on the right-hand side. Um, so uh, let's review that. So Let's say we put some sulfuric acid in water. What are the products going to be if we put sulfuric acid in water? Let's go ahead and write down the products. So the sulfuric acid is an acid, so it's going to deprotonate. And that'll leave it with a negative charge. And who's it going to protonate? Well, the only thing to protonate here is the water. So it'll protonate the water. And that'll give us this. Now, what just happened to the pH of this solution then? Did the pH go up, go down, or stay the same? So what was the effect of adding the sulfuric acid to increase the pH or to decrease the pH? Decrease the pH. Decrease the pH. Yeah. Good. Um, and that's because we know we have more hydronium here. Yeah. And we know when there's more hydronium, that means the solution is more acidic. And the pH has gone down. OK. So obviously, this solution was not buffered. It was not buffered because we were able to change the pH. Uh, and also. This will be a good review because we've seen this reaction a couple of times in the past. Suppose we put sodium hydroxide in water. Try to write the equation for what happens when you put sodium hydroxide in water. OK, excellent. So uh, you remember the key trap there that we've seen a couple of times. So that's some good progress. Even, so what we've seen in the past is, even though we're putting this in water, it turns out that it's not convenient to actually show water in the reaction of sodium hydroxide. It's not convenient to actually show the water here. Uh, for sodium hydroxide, it's more convenient 
it's just convenient just to show the sodium hydroxide uh, dissociating. So it is in water, but we, uh, we don't need to show the water to show that uh, this is producing hydroxide. Um, so this is a, an, uh, an exception to what we usually do. We don't need to show this reacting with the water. We just show it producing hydroxide. Now what's going to happen to the pH for this solution? Um, when you're ready. Increases. Increases. Because we know that pOH is going down. If there's more hydroxide, that would tend to increase the P, uh, I'm sorry, if there's more hydroxide, that would decrease the pOH and increase the pH. So that's right, basically the hydroxide here is going to be soaking up some protons and increasing the pH. 